24 hours before opening day, Mongolian art is arriving at the Oglethorpe University Museum from around the United States. About two weeks ago, I got a frantic call from the curator from Mongolia who told me the story about how this exhibit had pretty much fallen apart and um, that they needed good quality art and they needed it fast. How is it in Mongolia? Oglethorpe Museum director Lloyd Nick Great. gets long distance help from exhibit curator Glenn Mullen, who remains in Mongolia because of the government's collapse. Would it be better to have the conch shell in between them? The two have come up with a plan to replace the original exhibit with Mongolian art from private collectors around the U.S. Yeah, see the wax from back there? We ended up having yeah. eight collectors, and all of them knew that we were in crisis mode. I knew the next day that the government had collapsed in Mongolia and Lloyd was scrambling to put an exhibit together. A key to the success of the new exhibit is the donation of 26 pieces by Oglethorpe alumnus Donald Rubin. His Rubin Museum of Art in New York contains the Western world's largest collection of Himalayan art. Everybody in New York at the Rubin Museum thinks we pulled off a miracle because with their large staff they would completely refuse to do a show in two weeks. Dave, yeah. 10, 14 hour days, getting up in the middle of the night, communicating with Glenn, uh, getting okay. text. Glenn okay. did a heroic job. Okay. He's the curator. He put all the works together. Exhibit curator Glenn Mullen has lived a large part of his life in remote areas of Tibet and Mongolia. The author of more than 25 books, he is a renowned Buddhist scholar, an authority on Buddhist art, and legendary for his treks into the Himalayas. <laughs> Mongolian art is uh, something which reaches back in history for several thousand years and in terms of the Buddhist masterpieces, seven or eight hundred years of great artworks exist out there. Founded by Genghis Khan in 1206, the Mongolian Empire remains the largest and most powerful in world history. And nobody knows quite what is a Mongolian because uh, it really was a federation of hundreds of kingdoms stretching all the way from the tip of Korea, uh, far to the west to eastern Persia, all the way north, pretty well to the North Pole, and down deep into China. And so their culture was spread over this vast, vast territory. Back in Atlanta, Lloyd Nick, the museum's staff, and a group of volunteers all work intensely. But by day's end, much of the art is still yeah, not on the walls. And opening day is tomorrow. Karakuram is here, so this would go like this. February 12, 2006, opening day for the exhibit, which is titled Portals to Shangri-La. But Shangri-La is nowhere to be found, as a major snowstorm has just hit the eastern U.S. Lloyd Nick has planned an opening ceremony which includes Mongolian monks, performers, and the Mongolian ambassador from Washington. The ambassador just barely got out to come down. The monks were delayed. The singers, the musicians, and the dancers were delayed leaving Washington in the almost nine inches of snow that fell there. And they drove overnight getting in at five in the morning. Three hours before the ceremony, the performers arrive to create a Mongolian desert dwelling called a gair. guide is a Buddhist monk named Konchog Norbu who has spent time in Mongolia. The gear has very traditional meaning. Um, the altar is always at the back. There, You always walk clockwise. There is a place for women and there is a place for men. There's a place for guests and there's a place for family. They really 
are proud of their traditions. They like their traditions. They identify as Mongol. We are Mongol, and this is the way Mongols do things. The Mongol way of doing things was completely disrupted in 1921 when Soviet Russia occupied Mongolia. The practice of Buddhism was outlawed under penalty of death, and for the next 70 years, Mongolia would nearly lose its identity as a nation and a culture. Under the communist rule, unfortunately, especially during the Stalinist purges of the 1930s, an unbelievable amount of Mongolia's cultural masterpieces were simply demolished or looted or burned or otherwise removed from this world, which is an incredible um, tragedy, a cultural tragedy for the world. The ceremony begins when two of Mongolia's highest lamas, or monks, chant a blessing for the exhibit. They have traveled for two days to be here. The Mongolian ambassador arrives on a late plane, but in time to speak. To introduce to you also the small part of the Mongolian culture. and the musicians and dancers provide a taste of ancient Mongolian culture. After the ceremony, the public gets to see the exhibit, Portals to Shangri-La, Masterpieces of Buddhist Mongolia. Highlights include an ancient wall hanging woven from silk and yak tail hair. A depiction of Buddhist meditation practices which were kept secret for hundreds of years. And a painting titled The Subterranean by the great Russian mystic Nicholas Rorik who traveled to the Far East in the 1920s. Rorik is the one that put Mongolia on the map for the West. He's the first one to go there. He was in search of Shangri-La. That's the portals of Shangri-La, where you have the mountains of Mongolia, you have the cave, and you have these wise men that traditionally in secret meet going into the, the caverns and meditating on world peace. You can see in the artwork in this exhibit uh, something of the uh, heights of their spiritual achievement. If you think about the artwork as mirrors of their inner life. But in the end we were extremely delighted at the outcome. We, we managed to come up with uh, an, an art exhibit that really reflects the greatness of Mongolian history, the, the richness of its art. And I think that many people are praying for world peace. If not outright, I think they're wishing it. And, and I think exhibitions like this give that impetus that there is that possibility that we can live like human beings by treating other people like human beings. I think anything we can do in this time uh, to encourage that sense of unity, that sense of uh, common humanity, then that is one of the great contributions we can make. <laughs>